Every day, 60 semis haul away 1,200 tons of sludge from Blue Plains to farms in Maryland and Virginia, where it's used as fertilizer. And we're exporting carbon and uh, nitrogen and other nutrients and energy and giving it away to farmers. Not only do we give it to the farmers for free, but we pay somebody to haul it down there for them. And they value it at $300 an acre because of the fertilizer savings. But what if we could turn back half of those trucks? Instead of giving away this valuable resource, use it to produce clean energy, reduce our carbon footprint, and save money. All of these benefits coming from what had been considered a waste problem is an extraordinary opportunity. This is what that opportunity looks like at DC Water, a $470 million project with four towering concrete silos and shiny, futuristic-looking metal tanks to treat the sludge or biosolids removed during the wastewater treatment process. Yeah, the system is unique because we have this Canby thermal hydrolysis system here. It's the first one in North America, the largest one in the world. Here's how it works. The solids are fed into a tank, preheated, then pumped into reactors where they are cooked for 22 minutes at 338 degrees Fahrenheit under high pressure, which kills all the pathogens. In the final step, in a flash tank, the solids are quickly returned to atmospheric pressure. The pressure difference bursts the cells. Making the food very available for the hungry microbes in the digesters. These are the digesters. This will be filled with sludge almost to the top. 70 feet high, each digester can hold 3.8 million gallons of sludge. Uh, the sludge is basically sucked up through the bottom of the draft tube and spills out the top to keep circulation, to keep the heating temperature consistent and also to release the gases. Here in this massive space, tiny microbes will do their work eating the organic matter and producing methane. That gas is then captured and piped over to a power plant where when burned, it turns giant turbines to generate power and produce steam, which is recycled into the thermal hydrolysis process. When we produce the eight to 10 megawatts that come out of this, this system, that'll all be clean, green, renewable energy that we can use on site. It'll serve to provide about a third of our needs here, thereby reducing our enormous carbon footprint by a third. This time-lapse video of the construction of this facility belies the fact that DC Water and its board of directors moved very deliberately and did their homework, including more than 40 published research papers before deciding this was the right direction to take. In my view, it really was the board functioning at its highest level. We had dozens of reviews of technology, of financial implications, of consequences if we didn't, of costs at the plant of what we would have to do if we did not build this project. The benefits will not only include renewable energy, but also Class A biosolids, which can be safely blended into topsoil and other gardening products and used in the service area. Not surprising, many eyes are on DC Water to see how this technology performs on this unprecedented scale. But everybody is watching because this is a resource that is countrywide, worldwide, everywhere that human beings congregate, you're gonna have the what you don't want in the water removed and the question is what to do with it.